The idea for this video was actually my own, but I thought of it after re-watching the fourth OVA, make it, do or die survival training. So this is a similar concept to that, I hope you enjoy it. It's Monday morning and class 1A, now being class 3A, have been gathered out front of the school. Welcome class, today you're taking part in another group training exercise. Why are we always in groups? Teamwork is a huge part of being a hero Bakugo, exactly? This time round four bombs have been planted in different locations. But bombs? They aren't real bombs Midoriya. Dumbass obviously they wouldn't plant actual bombs. That information wasn't specified, how was Midoriya to know? You will be sent in groups of five to find and disarm these bombs after being given a target location? I'll read your groups now. Please put me with the smart people sensei. Me too, pretty please. They are predetermined based on previous scores, we didn't choose, your grades and quirk compatibility did. Quirk compatibility? What do you mean by that? If you'd let me read the teams maybe you'd understand. We're sorry sensei. Todoroki, Yurika, Minata, Koda, and Ashido-san are heading to the nearby train station. Yurika, yay thank god, we've got this. I'd like to get this done quickly. Group 2 heading to a neighboring high school are Ida, Tokoyami, Sato, Ajiro and Asui-san. Call me Tsu. We have a strong team. Oi oh, you're running out of groups and neither me or Dumb Deko have been called out yet sensei. Group 3 are, Bakugo, Jiro, Hagakure, Kirishima, and Midoriya. Nice Bakugo? What the fuck? Not nice, we all know what happens when I'm stuck with Deku. Kachan it's not hard to just work together for one hero exercise. You'll be heading to the old tunnels under the lake. Huh? Why would anyone put a bomb there? That's besides the point Bakugo Shonen, you must disarm the bomb no matter where it is planted. So the final group being sent to an office high-rise building are Yoyorozu, Shoji, Aoyama, Kaminari and Siro. A high-rise? That's totally cool. For hero work dude, not to see the view. Or my reflection in those shining windows. This is bullshit. You boys better behave. I'll keep my eyes on him, no need to worry. I don't need a babysitter, you will at least try to participate in teamwork, right Kachan? Fuck that. Mind your language Bakugo Shonen. And you should focus on team building in this exercise, all your marks will be based on how well you work together. So what if we don't disarm the bomb but still work well as a team? Well that's a stupid question, clearly we aren't a good team if we can't disarm the bomb? Yes, exactly that. Each group has been assigned a car to take you to your location? Oh and you have a time limit of an hour once you arrive? Just one hour? Yes, work efficiently, see you later. Wah, this place is kinda spooky. Seriously why did we get stuck underground? Come on guys it's not that bad. Jiro, could you try listening to see if you can hear like, the ticking of the bomb? We should make sure we're heading in the right direction? Whoa Kirishima-kun that's a super smart idea? I mean it's literally her quirk I just thought she'd done it already. I tried to when we first got here but I couldn't hear anything, we're a little further in now it might work. Jiro stuck her earphone jack into the tunnel wall and listened. Hey Bakugo stop walking a minute. Seriously. Kachan please just be quiet for a moment, it won't take long. Bakugo froze and glared at Deku, complying but feeling his blood boil. He really thinks he can tell me what to do huh? Cha, why did I even listen to him, I should have kept walking. He pouted with rosy cheeks, scolding himself inwardly for letting Deku control him. I still don't hear anything except the water from the lake above us. What a useless quirk that is then. They wouldn't have put Jiro in this location if her quirk wasn't useful Kachan, Aizawa sensei literally said our groups were picked based on quirk compatibility. Honestly I'm not sure how I'm useful down here, it's not like we need to sneak anywhere this place is totally abandoned. Nah don't sweat it. I'm sure you'll be great help, even just for search numbers. We're gonna need to split up at some point I'm sure. I'll go look on my own, the tunnel splits here anyway. There's no point splitting into 4 and 1. Bakugo glared at him and clenched his jaw as Deku stared back with determination. You boys can go together, Jiro and I will go the way that looks less scary. But if anything goes wrong, you girls don't have great defensive quirks, this place is old and crumbling. That's a good point. I think we have to stick together. Well someone needs to go get Bakugo then. Eh, uh, Kachan? Deku turned around just as Bakugo's figure disappeared into the darkness of the spookier tunnel. Let's just follow him, we'll search this side first. Why did he have to go down the scary one? 
Ka Chan wait it's not safe alone. Deku jogged ahead of the group to chase after Bakugo, quickly catching up and reaching a handout to grab him. I'm not five dumbass I can walk through a tunnel on my own, I know you have some weird obsession with saving me but I really don't need your help walking. Bakugo, let's just stick together anyway, look we should head out to this big room, but the tunnel keeps going, they wouldn't put the bomb this close, they gave us an hour it'll be deeper in. We might as well check it before we pass it Bakugo. You go do that then. Kachan come on. Deku grabbed Bakugo's arm and the blonde boy glared at him, trying to rip his arm away. Let me go, just come with us into the room Kachan. Don't tell me what to do. Bakugo yelled and brought his other arm round, charging an explosion right in Deku's face. Bakugo, don't do that underground you could. Tell him to let go of me then, stop being difficult Kachan. It's dangerous you should stick with the group. Stop talking to me like I'm incapable of looking after myself, Bakugo don't set off that explosion, let me go, no, Bakugo yelled out angrily but pointed the explosion away from Deku at the last second. You're so annoying, uh, guys. The ceiling, Bakugo's explosion caused the ceiling to crack, and just as it started crumbling, Deku activated Black Whip to knock the girls out the way of a falling piece. Kiri caught them and hardened his own body to block more of the rubble. Bakugo was just about to use more explosions as if that would help the issue at all, when Deku suddenly grabbed him with Black Whip and pulled him backwards. Kachan look out. He pulled Bakugo so quickly that they bumped into each other and fell to the ground. What the fuck are you? Bakugo stopped as he turned and noticed the huge cave in that happened right behind them, where he was stood. His eyes widened and he looked back down to Deku who was under him. You almost got crushed. Bakugo gulped and blinked standing up and looking away from Deku. Well, thanks, but I'm sure I would have dodged it without your help, humph. Wait, Kirishima, Toru, Jiro, they looked around and realized they were completely trapped in a small area by the rubble surrounding them. We're okay, but there's water filling the tunnel up, are you guys safe? They heard his voice faintly through the rubble and Deku panicked. There's water, we're fine but you guys need to get out before you get trapped. We're going to go get you help, don't move the rubble, you're lucky you're not filling with water, just stay put we'll be quick. Cha, what do they mean stay put? We can't just sit here we don't have time for that. Kachan I think our safety is more important than the training exercise right now. Our safety? We're perfectly fine dumbass. He marched toward one wall of rubble and began charging another explosion. Kachan are you crazy? Deku lunged forward and grabbed his arm again making Bakugo struggle to shake him off. If you blow this up the water could get in and we'll drown? We can't just sit here. Why not? Because we'd be pretty useless heroes if we can't even help ourselves let alone everyone else? Kachan, sometimes being a hero means knowing when you need to let others help you, you can't do everything yourself. Right now if we did anything we'd just be putting ourselves in danger and causing more trouble for everyone else. Bakugo frowned as he glared into Deku's eyes, he looked genuinely a little worried. He has a point, fuck. Please just sit and wait Kachan. They stared a little longer until Bakugo scoffed and looked away. Fine, but if it takes too long I'm blowing this whole place up. They'll be quick I'm sure. Deku let go of Bakugo's arm and smiled, looking around their little cave of rubble. It's a good thing we got trapped in a part of the tunnel that has lights. If we're gonna be stuck down here together you don't have to make it even more insufferable by making small talk nerd. Deku looked away and pulled his phone out of his pocket, sighing before shoving it away again. Clearly there was no service down in the tunnels. You know this wouldn't have happened if you'd just let me fucking exist. Huh? What do you mean? You're so, overprotective of me? And for what? It's not your place. Deku blushed and fumbled over his words nervously. I'm sorry Kachan, but, I can't help worrying after everything that's happened to you. Like what? Like that very first day I met All Might with the sludge villain and how I just couldn't stop myself from trying to save you, and when the League of Villains captured you, you seem to always be in danger and I can't help how everything inside me just screams at me to save you, well I never needed you to save me, why do you think so little of me, what, that's not it at all, I'm just trying to help, well you're not helping, all you're doing is making me feel useless, like you think I'm incompetent, Deku's eyes widened at the sound of Bakugo's voice cracking, He'd never even thought of it that way. This is stupid, why do I even care what he thinks of me? I know I'm not useless, I, I could've got out of those situations without him, I don't, I don't need him. Ka-chan, 
I'm so sorry, I never meant to make you feel like that. Look can we just, stop talking. Deka gulped as Bakugo looked at him almost pleadingly, and they sat on opposite ends of the room in an awkward silence. They sat for what felt like hours, but was really only about 10 minutes, avoiding eye contact and waiting for help. Oh my god this is bullshit. What's taking so long? You know time would pass quicker if we talked to keep us distracted. Bakugo turned to glare at him but then paused to think. Hmm, maybe this is the perfect opportunity to figure you out. Eh? Fine nerd let's talk, what do you and all might do in all your secret training? Ah, well, he just gives me advice on how to use one for all. Will you ever tell your mom how you suddenly got a quirk? I, I don't know, what's the point in telling her? Don't you think people deserve to know that you basically got a cheat code to having one of the most powerful quirks to exist? It wasn't a cheat code, I had to work so hard to be able to use one for all, you know that Kachan. Deka looked hurt as he stared into Bakugo's eyes, making the blonde boy cross his arms and look away, blushing a little guiltily. Whatever, still doesn't seem fair you got the number one hero's quirk. And was it fair that I was born without a quirk? Bakugo looked back to him in shock, blinking as Deka frowned at him, clearly upset. I guess that's a good point, it's not like it matters anyway I'll still be the number one hero over you. Hey where's your dad been all this time? Eh, why ask that all of a sudden? You said you wanted to talk and I have questions I'm curious about. Well a conversation works both ways Kachan you can't just keep asking me questions. You don't seem to be making any effort to ask me any. Why were you such an asshole in middle school? Bakugo's eyebrows shot up in shock, and even Deka's eyes widened the moment the words left his mouth. Ah, I'm sorry, I don't know where that came from. He flushed in embarrassment and looked away, Bakugo stared for a moment still completely dumbfounded, before laughing a little. Well, it was pretty justified. Deka looked up curiously, but Bakugo couldn't look him in the eye. I dunno, I found it fun to see how you'd react, it made me feel powerful, but, I'm sorry. He gulped and felt his face heating up as he looked to the floor, trying to pretend he couldn't see the way Deko was staring at him in disbelief. You're, actually apologizing? I'll take it back if you make a big deal out of it. Oh no, sorry, it's okay, thank you. The silence returned briefly but Bakugo refused to let the awkwardness fester. Come on it was your idea to talk to pass the time so why aren't we talking? Well, I seem to keep making you mad, what do you want to talk about? Hmm. He looked up to the ceiling in thought before getting an idea and looking back down with a mischievous glint in his eye. You ever had a girlfriend nerd? Wa, no no, I've never even wanted one. Really? I swear Pink Cheeks is into you? Eureka, no way. Besides I don't, like her like that. Bakugo raised an eyebrow before leaning back a little and looking away, mumbling under his breath. Well what about a boyfriend? Kachan, I, no I've not had a boyfriend, you'd know anyway come on we've like, been around each other our whole lives. Bakugo analyzed his words, staring at him with a questioning frown for a moment too long. What? You said you never wanted a girlfriend, but that you've never had a boyfriend, so does that mean you want a boyfriend? I, well I mean. I didn't really think about what I was saying in that much detail but, I guess, I mean I kinda. You totally want a boyfriend don't you, teehee. He shuffled a little closer, laughing and teasing as Deka huffed with bright red cheeks and crossed arms. Well what about you, humph. This made Bakugo sit back in shock, he wasn't expecting his own question to be turned on him, but he felt his cheeks heating up as he thought. Well I've never really thought about it. That's bullshit Kachan. If you're going to tease me for at least trying to answer your ridiculous questions the least you could do is be honest with me too. Stop yelling at me, what's gotten into you damn, but fine, I've thought about what it would be like to have a boyfriend before, seems kinda nice. Oh, really? Well yeah, why are you making it seem weird? Ah, uh, I don't mean to I just, I dunno I know I asked I just never expected you to actually answer, not like that at least. As they stared at one another Bakugo felt his heart rate increasing with nerves. Why is it so weird all of a sudden, why is he looking at me like that? Fuck, we're stuck down here together, for who knows how long, now is kinda the perfect time to just get everything off my chest, if I can. So if you've never had a, partner, have you ever kissed anyone? Uh, no, have you? Bakugo gulped and shook his head a little, noticing the way Deku's cheeks went a little pink and his pupils dilated. You said you wanted a boyfriend, anyone in mind? What? No, I dunno. Ah you totally like icy hot you can't lie to me. 
Well, Todoroki-kun is, attractive I guess, but we're just good friends. Icy Hot is not attractive, sure his face is, whatever, but like, no way, he's so boring. He's not boring? Todoroki-kun is very handsome and also very fun to be around. He was a little intimidating at first but. Geez why don't you just go and marry him huh? Kachan that's not, I just said I only see him as a friend. Then what about me? Deku went bright red and put his hands up, laughing awkwardly and brushing off the question. Why would you ask me that Kachan? I mean it's not like my opinion of you matters at all right? Of course it does. You think the half and half bastard is attractive so now I need to know if I am too. Kachan. Just tell me, if you think I'm ugly then. I don't. You're, you're attractive too Kachan. Bakugo grinned and sat up straighter, immediately feeling a wave of confidence wash over him at the ego boost. So who's more attractive then, me or Icy Hot? This is so embarrassing. I'm just asking you a question you're the only one who thinks it's embarrassing. Well subjectively speaking you're both very well suited to the beauty standards of. I'm asking what you think, not the whole world. Deku sighed and chewed on his lips, Bakugo was gradually shuffling closer with each question, he couldn't help how giddy he felt looking at Deku's red cheeks as he fumbled around his answers. I guess, in my opinion, you're more attractive Kachan. Hmm so in your opinion, is there anyone more attractive than me? Smug Bakugo. Why do you enjoy making me suffer? Just answer it, I'm totally not judging you at all. Fine, I, no, I've not seen anyone who I think is more attractive than you, but you hate me anyway so just because I think you look good doesn't mean anything. By this point Bakugo was sitting right in front of Deku, with a huge confident grin on his face. You're so in love with me, you wanna kiss me, and be with me, don't you nerd, teehee. His voice was playful as he teased the poor blushing boy, but his tone somehow eased Deku's embarrassment and he ended up smiling along with him, gently shoving him back with a shy whine. Stop it Kachan, you're crazy. Bakugo scanned Deku's face and his smile slowly faded, feeling his own heart rate pick up as he had an idea. Sigh, look, who knows how long we're gonna be stuck down here alone, aren't you bored? We should try something? What do you mean? If you're talking about trying to get out again you know we can't. No stupid I mean, make the most out of the opportunity we've been given. What, opportunity? We're alone, you said you've never kissed anyone before, right? Yeah, and you think I'm attractive. Ka-chan what are you? We should kiss. Just, to see what it's like? What? Why would we do that? Why not? Come on there's no way you haven't thought about it before. But but, that's irrelevant because thinking about it is very different than actually doing it. So you have thought about it? Deku slapped his hands over his face as Bakugo leant closer to him once again. Hey uh, I wouldn't be asking to do this, if I hadn't thought about it too. Deku peeked through his fingers with wide eyes, surprised to see how serious Bakugo looked, he wasn't lying. He slowly moved his hands away and scanned Bakugo's face, gulping nervously as his eyes locked onto the way he licked his lips. He's not saying no, he looks like he wants to, do I go for it? Their hearts were racing as Bakugo slowly closed the distance between them, reaching up to hold Deku's cheek and take a deep breath. Close your eyes. His voice was so soft, and Deku did as he was told, leaving his lips slightly parted in nervous anticipation. And then their lips touched. Bakugo pressed against him so softly as their lips shakily encapsulated one another, quiet smacking sounds filled the air each time their lips parted and reconnected. Holy shit. Bakugo's hand moved round to tangle in the back of Deku's curled hair, angling their heads a little and eagerly pressing his tongue into the kiss. Oomph. Deku's eyes shot open in shock before he met Bakugo's tongue with his own and his eyes rolled back, instinctively bringing his hands up to wrap over his shoulders and pull him closer. In the heat of the moment Bakugo placed his other hand on Deku's waist, his tongue exploring Deku's mouth as he got desperate. Bakugo tugged gently on his hair, and Deku lost it accidentally letting a small whiny moan slip through his lips. Holy fuck. The sound set something off in Bakugo and he had to pull back to catch his breath and get his mind under control. As their lips parted and a small string of saliva connected them, Deku went bright red and Bakugo immediately laid on his back, also bright red, staring at the ceiling in disbelief. Oh my god. That. That was incredible. Yeah yeah. Bakugo sat up again to stare at Deku with an excited grin. I mean I have nothing to compare it to but, that was amazing. You're amazing? Ah. Uh. He froze and blinked as he scanned Deku, his hair was a mess, 
his cheeks rosy, eyes blown wide and lips swollen. Fuck. He sighed and ran a hand into his own hair. Kachan, what did that mean? Well I, I just wanted to try it, but it ended up being way better than I ever thought it could be and now, you were talking about making the most of this opportunity, so, I think I should do that too. Bakugo sucked in a breath as he noticed how nervous Deku suddenly looked, his eyes shimmering a little. I had a crush on you when we were kids. Before we even learned anything about the norms of dating and falling in love, I just wanted to be around you all the time, you were so cool, and then as we grew up my feelings didn't change, that's why it hurt so much when you. He trailed off, and Bakugo's chest squeezed, he didn't need the words, he knew what Deku meant. But I couldn't just avoid you, I didn't want to. I remember when I first cried to my mom about it, screaming how it wasn't fair. No matter how awful you made me feel I couldn't help the way I just wanted to understand you. I wanted to watch you keep getting stronger and couldn't wait to see you become a real hero. I cried so hard about the stupid feeling in my chest every time you smiled or even glanced my way. And then my mom helped me understand that I'd always loved you. Bakugo's eyes widened as his thoughts and feelings went tumbling down a hill, and he was speechless. I realized that back in middle school. I thought I'd just be able to deal with it and somehow maybe move on eventually, but after we got into UA together and, I dunno at least to me it felt like we got a little closer, ha, huh. everything got worse. He smiled weakly and scratched his neck, finally looking back into Bakugo's still shocked eyes. How could you, feel like that for so long, and not say anything? Well until literally 10 minutes ago I thought you hated everything about me. Nothing good would have come from me saying anything until now, I mean it still might have been a bad idea. I'm sorry. What are you, oh, no it's okay I wasn't expecting you to feel the same or anything. What? God you're dumb, I'm saying sorry for like, everything, the past? I'm sorry for being such a jerk, it's just in my nature and I'll probably still be a jerk but, imagining you that upset doesn't make me feel powerful at all, makes me feel like a piece of shit. Oh, well I appreciate it Ka-chan, but I still don't really understand what any of this means, we just, we kissed Ka-chan. I know I know, damn it, look I just noticed how much you've changed recently, you're stronger, and even though you have all this power you're so, nice to people, and you make everyone else feel better about themselves all the time with this stupid cute smile on your face and, cute? Well yeah you're super fucking cute and I couldn't stop thinking about what it would be like to kiss you, eh? Really? Yeah, for like a few months. Oh, does that mean, you, like me, like that? Cha, maybe, I dunno. I don't even know what that feels like. Have you ever thought about kissing anyone else? What? You, gross no way. Deku looked away with a giddy smile, blushing adorably. Well I'm flattered. Huh, what do you mean? Oh, Bakugo blushed as realization hit him, Deku really was the only person he'd ever even imagined kissing. I guess maybe I do like you then. Well, would you want to kiss me again? Or, maybe more than that? Bakugo stared at him and gulped thickly, feeling his skin prickle with goosebumps as he nodded slowly. Um hmm, yeah, I think I would. He blinked in shock as Deku reached forward to grab his hand, tilting his head with his precious little smile. Then I'd like to ask you on a date Kachan. Date? Um hmm, we did things a little backwards, kissing before our first date, unless this counts as a date, I guess we are alone. Whoa well I'm sorry for kissing you so suddenly with no explanation until afterwards. I really did do it backwards didn't I? That's okay, it was, a really really nice kiss. Yeah, um, I guess we could go on a date. Bakugo? Midoriya? Are you both still okay? The two boys shot up from the floor at the sound of Kirishima's yelling through the rubble. Of course we are dumbass what took so long? We're okay Kirishima, how's everything out there? Cementos has patched up all the cracks, there's no more water anymore we just need to get through this wall to you guys now. I'll blow it up, stand back. Kachan I don't know if that's a good idea. Uh -huh. Why? What if this pile is blocking water that's above, they cleared that side but not above the wall itself? But I, Cementos said it's fine, do it Bakugo, he'll patch any more cracks it creates. Bakugo grinned, he could finally blow some shit up. Get back nerd? Okay, not too big right Kachan. Bakugo charged up his explosions, looking over his shoulder to double check that Deku was out of the blast radius, before letting that wall of rubble be blown to ashes. Ah that felt good. And no water? Wa we're free Kachan. Deku jogged forward and latched onto Bakugo's arm, the blonde boy almost instinctively shook him off, 
but froze as he looked into his sparkly eyes, and smiled instead. Yeah, we probably got a fail on the damn training exercise though huh? It was my fault, I'm sorry, I'll have to apologize to the others too. You guys are okay? Kirishima came rushing over the loose rocks on the ground and tackled them both in a hug. We were worried you were gonna kill me Doriya, Baku. He trailed off as he pulled back and noticed how Deku was practically glued to Bakugo's side. Huh? Bakugo looked down and pushed Deku away in panic. That, was nothing? Don't even say anything? Kachan, what do you mean? Well, do you really want everyone to know? I wouldn't want to hide it, would you? What are you talking about? What's going on? Nothing? Bakugo looked between Kiri, who clearly wasn't buying his bullshit, and Deku, who was looking at him with tears in his eyes and the saddest pout he'd ever seen. Sigh, fine, we're like a thing I guess, I dunno, we're like boyfriends or something. Boyfriends? Huh? Well we kissed and you asked me on a date? Yeah but I didn't think you'd wanna, call it that already. Am I not supposed to? No no, I'll be your boyfriend Kachan sure, teehee. What the fuck? They looked back to Kirishima who was just staring with his jaw hanging wide in pure confusion, until Bakugo hit the back of his head and he snapped out of it. You know now that I think about it I guess that makes sense. Huh, how? Well at Siro's party Bakugo got really drunk and like, he just randomly said, does anyone else think Deku's like super pretty? Have you ever wondered if his lips are as soft as they look? He imitated a drunk Bakugo and the boy shoved him in embarrassment as Deku giggled. I just didn't question it cause you were so drunk, but it makes total sense. You didn't need to expose me like that. Humph. Why would you wanna keep this a secret anyway? Like the relationship I mean? That's not exactly fair on me dobro. Well I'm not comfortable with everyone knowing so it wouldn't be fair on me. Are you embarrassed to tell people I'm your boyfriend? What? No of course not. That's bullshit, what other reason do you have to? Bakugo cut him off by huffing and pulling him forward, kissing him square on the lips and holding his face. Oi get a room, I didn't ask to say that. Kiri blushed and looked away, immediately catching eyes with Jiro and Toru who had just rushed into the area. What the fuck? Oh my god? Bakugo let go of Deku and glared at the girls, the smaller boy blushed and waved awkwardly. What are you staring at huh? You were just, fully making out with Deku? You know what fuck it, we can tell everyone nerd but don't blame me if they all react like this cause they think it's weird. Of course it's weird you hated each other like an hour ago? What no? They're always flirting Jiro this was so obvious what do you mean? Everyone looked to her in pure confusion. Seriously? Mina and I have had a bet going on how long it would take one of you to confess and make this shit happen. Wait, OMG Mina owes me 3000 yen. About 20 dollars. Of course you and Raccoon Eyes would do something stupid like that. Oh, we should head out of here, the other teams have all finished and are heading back to UA. They began to make their way out the tunnel, Deku holding Bakugo's hand as the blonde boy blushed shyly. Oh yeah, um, I'm really sorry for. No, it was my fault, I'm sorry for messing this up and ruining all our grades. Did you just apologize? Oh get over it. Ah, Bakubro we forgive you. Also you didn't mess up our grades, us three got an immediate pass for knowing what to do to get out of there and get you guys help. Uh -huh. What about us? Well Kachan we kinda both caused an entire tunnel to flood so. Yeah you both have detention, but also passed, cause you waited for help and didn't make the situation worse. We all thought you were gonna try and explode your way out of there. I almost did, this dumbass stopped me. I'm still surprised you actually listened to me. Yeah well it was smart, you're smart. Oh god this is going to take a while to get used to. They finally made it out the tunnel together and the two boys breathed in the fresh air. Yeesh I didn't realize how dusty and gross it was in there. It wasn't so bad. Deku turned to kiss Bakugo on the cheek, and a bright flash caught them off guard as Toru had snapped a photo. Oi what are you doing? Sending it to Mina. Delete it? He lunged toward Toru but Deku held his arms back as the girl scurried into the car. Kachan it's not that big of a deal, you said we could tell everyone anyway? Oh yeah, I'll send it to the group chat then, teehee. She called from the car as the boys climbed in after them. Ga you're all annoying. It's okay Kachan. It's a cute photo. How do you know? Cause you're in it. Whoa Midobro I never knew you could flirt. Huh? Only with me okay back off shitty hair. Oh god he's the jealous type too? Of course he is. There? Oh you might wanna check the chat. Everyone has a lot of questions.
in the villain crushers group chat. Midoriya, are you still alive after such a reckless attempt at showing affection? Eh? Of course I am. Deku, you kissed Bakugo? God damn it Toru I guess I owe you some yen huh? Yes ma'am, is this some fun party game I don't know about? I wanna kiss and get money out of it? The girls made a bet on when Bakubro and Midobro would get together. Get together? They're dating? Shook. I'm happy for you Deku-chan. Did you have the balls to make the first move Bakugo? Huh? Of course I did. Deku is my boyfriend so you'd all better back off, that goes to you two pink cheeks, and especially you icy hot. Humph. Huh. Midoriya is my friend I can't just never talk to him. He means romantically Todoroki-kun, he thinks we like Deku-kun. Bakugo, do you need to see a doctor? Hey come on it's my fault really, since I did tell Kachan I thought you were handsome Todoroki-kun. He's not wrong? Oh thank you. I said back off. Deku says I'm more attractive than anyone he's ever seen so you extras have no shot. Really Midoriya? Todoroki is totally more attractive than Bakugo. I'd have to agree with that too. Agreed? Well I don't think it's a competition but, thank you all very much. Well you're all irrelevant anyway, who gives a shit what you think, Deku said I'm more attractive so that's all that matters. God you guys should see the way Deku is looking at him right now. Is it cute? I bet it's adorable. It's, a lot to get used to, eh, now they're kissing again. Seriously these two need to learn about PDA, but it's cute though. IRL. Oi just cause you're invisible doesn't mean I won't beat you up. Kachan the pictures are cute. Stop encouraging her nerd. But I like the photos. Well, uh, well, fine then, huff. Deku giggled and kissed Bakugo on the cheek again as he continued to pout. So they're still going to argue all the time, but instead it'll end, with a kiss? This is life now Kirishima, we'd better get used to it. Yay this one was fun to write. I'm glad to get another cute one-parter out. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll probably be posting a poll soon with a few options on what video to make next. It's been a while since I asked you so look out for that in my community tab. Thanks for watching, love you all so much.